welcome to another introductory video of QPCR. In this video, we will learn what is QPCR, how it works and what is the principle of working of QPCR. So actually QPCR, it is advanced version of normal PCR and uh, this is a 96 well plate of QPCR and this is the 96 well plate of normal PCR. So uh, as it is visible, we can see a clear a difference between normal PCR and QPCR. We can see that in for the QPCR, uh, there is a special type of plastic, and uh, this plastic is covered by a lid, uh, lid off of plastic. We can see that uh, this plastic actually uh, we put this plastic in the QPCR when we need to run the PCR machine. So here we can see actually that here we place the 96 well plate, and that is recorded by these sensor which are upward and those sensor record that values in the form of uh, curves that are processed by this software this so which uh, 96 well plate plate is actually uh, fit into this hole and uh, what uh, what uh, what occurs actually uh, all the gradients of PCR are usually at the bottom of this side so a specific wavelength passes uh, through in it and that is recorded by a sensor that is placed upside here that actually sensor what does that sensor records the amplification of DNA in the upward then that data is changed uh, in, in the form of curves and the graphs and that is processed by a software by a computer that computer is attached with this machine so with the help of this we can determine the relative expression of our gene of interest so what are the main differences between the normal pcr and qpcr the major difference is that it can give the quantitative relative expression after each cycle but this actually amplify the dna and that quantity of dna can only be monitored at the end of our uh, running PCR cycle so uh, actually this is the advanced version of normal PCR so uh, actually there are many uh, guidelines to use this uh, uh, QPCR machine so we know that PCR machine was invented by Kerry Mollers and uh, in 1984 and uh, 83 and then these were changes and few new advancements were brought into this machine and finally this version uh, is actually Q Tower 3G. We uh, purchased it from Germany. We can see that here it is written made in Germany. So, actually, uh, this is a tower, and there are different types of QPCR. But the real concept is that that it works on the basis of fluorophores. What are fluorophores? Fluorophores are, are actually chemical dyes which absorb the specific uh, wavelength of light and that changes with the time of D. As we know in the normal PCR, uh, all the ingredients like water, primers, DNA, but the basic difference with the, with the QPCR, uh, we use cDNA and here we use normal DNA in, in the case of normal PCR. So while using uh, QPCR, we should use cDNA. That cDNA actually is the form of all the transcripts which are reverse transcribed into cDNA. So uh, that fluorophores like, like different companies make different types of fluorophore like we use here cyber green. That cyber green dye actually absorbs the specific wavelength uh, that it passes through from this hole and this well uh, record the amplification and quantification of DNA after the each cycle. When each cycle is finished and the level of that DNA amplification is recorded in the form of peak. But here in the normal PCR, actually, when all the PCR thermal cycle uh, is finished, after the end of that cycle, we can monitor the amplification of DNA in the form of band. But here it is the advanced version, we can see the data in the form of peaks. So now I will take you to the uh, computer screen and I will show you how it actually works. Here is that software which is attached with QPCR. So uh, this is the 96 well plate layout and we can name them according to our choice like uh, the first one 
uh, here I can show you the first three were actually the housekeeping gene that is actin so I have named them as actin you can name them according to your choice and uh, here I can show you some other features uh, this software is now showing one completed qpcr cycle of my samples so uh, we can go to the thermal cyclers we can see the reaction temperature like the normal pcr we use like 95 degrees celsius then 55 then extension and elongation uh, annealing uh, at uh, 95 and then uh, further on its extension so uh, here is the scanning sample like uh, in this 520 nanometer to 470 nanometer uh, blue light uh, excitation spectrum was used so these were the sample details and uh, if we go to monitor that how yeah here we can see that this is the intensity which was recorded by that uh, sensor which i i have just shown previously so we can see that as uh, the number of cycles proceeds like 5 to 10 we can see that the overall excitation spectrum increases so actually uh, we know that each sample is repeated three times so uh, here uh, each uh, line represents the one sample so uh, we can see that as there is a uh, increase in the excitation of light so there is up to a certain level uh, that uh, absorption uh, absorbance spectrum can be detected by that sensor and uh, that uh, level which can be recorded is also that minimum level which is required to detect the uh, spectrum which denotes the relative expression of any gene can be regarded as the CT value or calculate uh, uh, CT value I mean critical threshold value we can also calculate CT values of our all sample we just need to click on this calculate CT so we can see that all the CT values have been calculated so we can uh, just go to export and export these uh, CT values for all of our samples and can use for the later on analysis so uh, this was analysis we can also compare if, if we want uh, anyone uh, we can just uh, compare the each one so this is the delta delta ct method quantification we can also uh, compare anyone and make uh, the graph here inside uh, this software but we can also make graphs in other uh, like excel sheet that uh, i have already prepared uh, a video that is on my channel you can see that that how we can change the city values to the uh, how can we can change city values to their graph so these were the melting curves when they when the melting has been done and started to decrease and uh, this was the end point so uh, that's all this was a brief view about uh, this qpcr so uh, we should remember that uh, there are the mic guidelines which we should keep an eye that are the minimum information for publication of quantitative real-time PCR experiments. So that should be followed for the publication of uh, experiment uh, data which was done through this qPCR software. Hope so uh, this brief view will help you to know what is qPCR and how we can use this. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any question, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.